Gründung von Third Packets Church in Cape Town. Ah, Progression Sir. Uh, we pass our love and our regards to the elder Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. I need to let me, let me start with the sisters this morning. Amen. God bless you so much for the senior items this morning. Amen. Sister Mary. Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary. Amen. Sister God bless you for now. Tell me more about this man. Tell me more of who I am. And as you know, our pastor is in uh, Namibia. Uh, the, the pastor and leader. And then thank you for your praise, amen. And uh, we believe that the Lord will use him in a special way, amen. We also ask that the Lord, uh, from the traveling verses, I think, will fill it as tomorrow or Monday, coming back. And we please give our pastor in prayer, amen. We did have a conversation with you, okay? He said the service is going well, and we certainly thank the Lord for that, amen. 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 Um, also, the Gipeta family has traveled well to Malawi, and it has quite a distance, it's amen. We certainly thank the Lord for being with them. They arrived safe, amen. I don't know if any brother Gipeta said they'll be back sometime before Christmas, but please keep them in your prayers, amen. amen. You know, it's, 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 it's hoping countries, it's borders, it's, it's children, it's. We trust the Lord for traveling mercy. Amen. We certainly do this to Amen. Amen. And also, Brother Sonny and Sister Maria attending a family funeral. If you don't see them this morning, Amen. Amen. And also, last I think we just want to say thank you for supporting us, the Tamala family, for those who knew Brother Kino, because he was going to be with the Lord. Amen. The, the funeral was last week Friday. I was, was attending for a while. Amen. God bless you. Um, and also, as the pastor said, uh, this coming Wednesday we'll have Brother Brother Gonzalez for our midweek services. Amen. We cannot have services with empty chairs, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Let's make an effort, amen. We can support the work of the Lord. Our Pastor Gonzalo will be missing for our midweek service, amen. Uh, there's a few more, but I think I'll make them after church, amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll make a few announcements after the after administration this morning. Amen. And last but certainly not least, amen. We've got a brother heavy. He had to do with us this morning. God bless you, sir. Let's give a round of applause for that. Now, now, Brother Happy needs no introduction. And I might as well just say confirmation. Right? Brother Happy has been here before. And every time Brother Happy has been here, it's been nothing other than a blessing. Amen. Amen. And I'll give you an open, open secret this morning. Amen. We are an open secret. Amen. Brother Happy is prepared. Amen. He is no doubt fasted and prayed about the service this morning. But believe you me, it's all about you this morning. Amen. And uh, you come expecting, amen. And don't be surprised, but the happy needs is known to attend to somebody's need. That's why we come to church, amen. amen. So your job this morning is to say amen. 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 Brother Happy takes 15 minutes, it's your fault, amen. You say amen and you press on through for what you came for this morning, which is a blessing, which is an answer to a prayer, uh, which is a financial breakthrough, a closer walk with the Lord, a pattern for the Holy Ghost, you name it. Amen. We serve a limitless God this morning. Amen. Amen. I think at this time, let's just stand up on our feet and sing a song before we are the men of God. Amen. I'll ask you, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Amen. Let's just give God a lot of hand of praise. Amen. 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 And we have come into this place. We get in His name to worship Him. That's the truth this morning, amen, is it? As we raise our hands, amen, let's pray that this year. We have come into this place. Oh, and we get in His name.
Since we'd like to thank uh, Brother, Brother Blessing, our pastor, for the kind invitation to come and share the word of the Lord with you. I think it speaks of confidence that uh, someone can leave this, this flock to someone else. So I trust that you are be praying for me today. Amen. Amen. And we are look up to God. Amen. Amen. Not so much from the man, I'm just like anybody else. Amen. But what matters is what God speaks. Amen. 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 Praise be to God. Okay, without any waste of time, let's get into it. How many are ready? Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Uh, maybe before we do that, let's speak to him. If you've got a need, you can raise your hand. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we just come to you once again. Lord, we are under great expectation, Father, that you. God, you will come and say something. Oh God, our hearts are hungry. Hallelujah. Our souls is thirsty. Even as David said, as the deer pinches after the water pot, so my soul longs after you. May you come, Lord, and speak. Speak by the way of your word. These are your people, oh God. You've called them, oh God. They wouldn't be here if you didn't draw them far. You know their needs. Lord, you know exactly, oh God, that we have need of. And I pray that through the preaching of the word, that Lord, you are blessing the need. Lord Jesus, we don't just pray for this service only, but Lord, we think of God a blessing. We think of God our dear Lord in Namibia. Men of God that are preaching the word. Lord, may you anoint them, Lord. Use them, Lord Jesus. We are so, we are so happy to hear the glad tidings so far Amen. that the services are going well. Father, we just pray, Lord, wherever your children are gathered, the little flock around the world, we pray that Lord, your presence will be there, oh God. We pray this morning that you forgive us of our trespasses. Forgive us of our besetting sin. May you have your way, O oh God. For Lord, not so long we can see that we're going to see you, O oh God. Amen. Help us, Father, may you give us something. Lord, I yield myself, Lord, to you. O oh God, even as your prophet says that the gift is the ability to get yourself out of the way. 
so that the Holy Spirit can come. Speak mighty God. You promised in your word, so we're two or three. Just two or three. God, in your name, you said you'll be in our midst. We therefore believe that you are here. You are in our midst, Father. May you come and break the bread of life. Get glory to yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, the brothers that they announced here, uh, I didn't come alone. I came with my family and also my brothers. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless them. Amen. Amen. All right, saints. Um, let's, we're going to read from two places in the Bible. The, the first part is going to be a little bit lengthy. But there's a reason for that. Amen? Amen? I hope you don't mind. Amen? Amen. We're going to go to Luke chapter 24. We start from verse 13 all the way to, to 10 to 32. And then we'll also go to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32. Let's start reading. The Bible tells us, it says, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which, which was from Jerusalem, about three score fellows. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. I want you to underline, the Bible says, But their eyes were holding that they should know him. Yeah. Amen. And he said unto them, What men of communication are these that ye have one to another as you walk in ascent? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Are thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said, he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yet certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were earlier the sepulchre. And when they found on his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said he was alive. And several of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw him not. Then he said unto them, O oh, fools, slow of heart to believe that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 27, I want you to underline 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And when they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made us though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to tell with them. It came to pass, as he sat and meet with them, he took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened. And they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, Did not our heart bear within us while they talked with us by the way, and while they opened to us the scriptures? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. You may be seated. Amen. I'd like to speak to you today on this title. The bride is the mystery of Christ revealed. Amen. The bride is the mystery of Christ revealed. And for a subject, we would like to take this the second fold manifestation of the threefold manifestation. It may sound wordy. But there is a mystery behind that. And we would like to show you today by the help of the Lord that you are the second fold of the threefold manifestation. Amen. Amen. 
Now, the prophet taught us that God works in number three. Yeah. How many can say that? Amen. How many can say amen to that, brother? Amen. Uh, three is God's number of perfection. Yeah. And in fact, when you run through scriptures, you begin to see what the prophet God is talking about. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let's break down this just for a moment. We find ourselves in Luke chapter 24. It was the two disciples that were coming from Jerusalem to a village called Emmaus. And in this journey, they started talking about God. They started talking about Jesus and the things which had just happened. And Jesus will step in and will begin to have conversations with them. But unfortunately, they did not know him. Hallelujah. They could hear the man speaking, no doubt they can see this is the man. But they did not know it was their very own Messiah. Hallelujah. But the good thing you need to credit them for is the fact that they were talking about him. Yeah. Yeah. So God Brennan tells us, he said, when you talk about him, he comes. Amen. So it has not changed even today. As it was 2,000 years ago, on that journey, it's still the same even today. The prophet of God tells us, he said, the problem is, we talk about everything else but Him. Particularly in this day that we're living in. There is so much that is going on in the world today that if you're not careful, you can find yourself so involved, so deep into current state of affairs until you forget about it. Hallelujah. So I want to I wanna talk to you today like you are Clepas and his friend. Is that right? Amen. Now it was after resurrection. The prophet tells us, he said, it was a dark time for the believers at that point in time. Can you imagine that they've spent about three and a half years with him. They looked up to him. And at that time, you will recall that uh, uh, they were looking to him to sort of like take over the, the government as it were. Because Rome was in charge at that point in time. Now the very leader that they were looking up to, he is gone. Hallelujah. Yes. It was so dark. It was so dark to a point where uh, the Bible tells us that Peter, they were so discouraged and so sad until Peter said, you know what, let me go back to what I used to do before. Uh, yeah. uh, he went back fishing. Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Yeah. The problem God tells us, he said, the problem was they, they believe some scriptures but some scriptures they did not. Yeah. They recognize him on certain things that he has said, yeah. but other things they could not see. That's right. Because if you recall, he told them, he says, destroy this temple. Amen. Right? right? And I'll raise it in three days. He said, I've got power to lay down my life, and I've got power to raise it up. So what happened to those scriptures? What happened to those scriptures? Hallelujah. Now, so what was happening as Jesus was talking to them, it was actually the word in flesh quoting the word of the letter. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. And the Word was, was God. And that Word was made flesh. How many believe Jesus was the Word made flesh? Hallelujah. Amen. You see, it is 
not good enough just to quote the word of the letter. The word of the letter has to become flesh in your flesh. As they were journeying, the Bible tells us that the journey from Jerusalem to Emmaus was about three score fellows. Which is, the prophet says it was about six miles. In our kilometers, it will be, I think, between nine and ten kilometers. Hmm. It looks so short. Yeah. But the prophet of God tells us, he said, Jesus took a six hour sermon. Amen. A six hour sermon, yes, revealing himself to these two gentlemen about who he was. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now, as he's talking to them, like I said, they didn't know him. No. But here's the thing it means there's a difference between knowing him and having seen him. No. They, they have seen him. I mean, they stayed with him for three and a half years. Come on now. They fished with him. They ate with him. They followed him. In fact, we will say today, these people were message believers. They were the followers of the prophet. Because they said to him, he said, Hey, are you a stranger? Haven't you heard of what happened to this great prophet who was mighty indeed before God, this prophet of Nazareth? So it means these people were followers of the prophet of that day. But they did not know who he was. So having seen him and knowing him is two different things. So what does it mean today? Somebody can follow him without knowing him. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 you love him. This is wonderful. Amen. They were sad. Why are you sad? Because the scriptures have already prophesied that this thing that these things are going to happen. You can say, well, that was two thousand years ago. Let me challenge you. Yeah. The prophet of God tells us, he said, we have been promised yes. that after 2,000 years, Jesus will resurrect again. Amen. You say, what do you mean? Luke 17, 30. Mm -hmm. But in the days of law, so shall it be as it was. Yeah. The Son of Man will be revealed. Amen. In other words, the, the very same thing that happened on that resurrection morning 2,000 years ago Amen. is going to repeat itself even today. Amen. And what happened back then, that's exactly what is going to happen today. Oh, you say, what do you mean? When we talk about the Son of Man, it's way deeper than we think. Amen. You say, what do you mean? Bell Brown tells us, he said, he said, um, he said, uh, the Elijah of this day is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want to go there. But are you with me? Let's take very long in it. What was so difficult about these two disciples uh, recognizing who he was, it was just too much for them. It was too much of a phenomenon. Not only that, but Abraham says they were caught up in the enthusiasm of the supernatural until they forgot who he was. When he did the supernatural, it was just to attract the attention of the people. The main thing was about him making himself known unto them. Is that right? They saw him cast out the devils. They, they saw him heal the sick. Exactly. They saw him raise the dead. 
Is that right? That was the, the supernatural. But the main thing was about him knowing, it was about them knowing who he was. So it seems to me Jesus is very much interested in you and I knowing who he is. Because the Bible tells us to know him, to know him is life. It's all right, you can see him heal the sick. It's all right, you can see him uh, cast out devils. You can see the supernatural. That's wonderful and great. But if you miss the real thing, you have missed everything. Somehow, Jesus is interested in you and I knowing who he is. Can I give you a scripture? The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 16. After he has walked with them for a while, and then he began to turn to his disciples. He said, who do people say that I am? Why is he asking that question if he knew if he knew that people knew who he was? No doubt he knew that they did not know who he was. That is why he's asking, what are the people saying that I am? They say some of you are Jeremiah, some of you are this, some, some of that, you know. Like today we've got different kind of churches. In fact, we've got 45,000 different Christian denominations today. Yeah. Why? It's based on the basis of how they see him. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. But Jesus is saying, alright, alright, that's fine. I was asking you about the people out there. I want to ask you. Yes. Come on now. I'm asking you. Yes. Who do you say yes. that I am? Yes. 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 Who do you say that I am? Yes. Is that yes. right? And the Bible tells us that only Peter, Amen. don't miss that, only Peter yes. answered the question. Amen. The rest of the disciples not did not. Did not. Did not. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. So somehow he wants you to know who he is. Amen. 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 Could it be why Brother Branham will preach a message like this? Who is this? Come on now. Who is this? Could it be why you will preach messages like Christ is the mystery of God revealed? Could it be that you will preach messages like the unveiling of God? If this man was not interested in you and I knowing exactly who he is. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You love him. Amen. 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 I want you to notice how Jesus made himself known to these two gentlemen. Mm. He used what I call an indirect approach. He was not direct. But I mean, he realized that they don't know him. So the question is, Lord, why? Why don't you just tell them straight? Yeah. Right? They are referring to him as a stranger. I mean, if we're gonna have a six hour a six hour journey, you might as well just tell these guys that listen, man. I am Jesus. Yeah. I'm the Messiah. Yeah. No, he doesn't do that. No. And then now we are coming to my subject matter. Mm. He doesn't do that. I want you. I want you to watch. He uses an indirect approach. Yeah. Mm. What is the indirect approach? He is going into Scripture. Yeah. Right. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yes. He is going to what? Into Scripture. Yeah. Amen. You want to know me? I'll tell you where you're going to find me. Right Why is he doing that? Well, the answer is based on the same of the prophet preach called Christ is revealed in his own word. Amen. Yes. So, knowing me, you've got to find your way in Scripture. Yeah. 
By the way, Jesus was the only one who knew who he was. There was no situation that was that would come up that Jesus that would sort of shape Jesus. He always knew his position. Amen. He knew who he was. Amen. How did he know who he was? That's the question. Amen. Now we have been told that the day we know who we are, who we are the rapture will go. That's right, my so I believe that we can learn something from Amen. Jesus. Amen. If we believe that Jesus knew who he was, Amen. The rapture, the rapture. Yes. He knew who he was, yes. and we are supposed to know who, who we are. are. Yes. 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 Anything that happened with Jesus Amen. can repeat itself. In Amen. Amen. Are you ready for that? Amen. So how he how he made himself known is that he went into scripture. Amen. Okay, somebody maybe is not here. Amen, man. Uh, let's take a well known scripture, Malachi 4 5 and 6. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet. Is that right? Amen. Let's just dissect it for a moment. Is that prophecy? Yeah. Is that scripture? Yeah. So he said, Behold, I. Who's that I? God. Amen. Send you Elijah. Yes. Now, we don't need to guess about who that Elijah is. No, no. That Elijah, you might as well say William Branham. Alright? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the question is, who is that you? Amen. Behold, I will send you William Branham. Who is that you? Amen. You are the you. Amen. You are the you. Amen. Oh, come on. Amen. That's how Jesus identified himself in Scripture. He was the word in flesh quoting, oh my, quoting the word of the letter. Isn't it, isn't it powerful? I mean, this is you. You are living about yourself. So you are, you are the new You love him. Amen. You love him. Amen. It's wonderful. Amen. Yeah. I love you the way you are. Miss you listening to me. No one, no one is sleeping. Brilliant. I'm gonna take my time. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we we spoke about the second fold of the threefold manifestation. Right. What does that mean? I'll get to it a little bit later, but I want to introduce something to you here. Now, Jesus, him knowing who he was, it was on his basis. It was on the basis that it was not him per se, Amen. but it was the one that was in him. Amen. You see, if you don't represent, if there is someone in you, the Bible says, Greater is he that is in, is in you. So Jesus' power really was centered on the basis of the one that was in him. Amen. Amen. He said, I do nothing unless I see the Father. Show me. Now, there was no demon that could stand before him. No, 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 no. Because if he was not William Brown standing behind the platform, behind the pulpit, it was the one that was in him. Now Jesus said, it is not me. It is not me, but him that is in me that is doing the work. Hallelujah. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Is that right? Amen. Do you love him? Amen. Now, so Jesus, I'm going to deal with it a little bit later. Jesus was the first fold or first phrase of the threefold manifestation. Amen. Amen. In other words, what you have seen in Jesus is going to repeat itself in you and I. Amen. We will come on the same basis. 
The way he was manifested, it will manifest itself in you. Oh, hallelujah. So it was the Father that was in him. That's what made the difference. Let me read you a scripture, John 14, verse 7. It says, If you had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him. Amen. And have seen him. Let's jump to verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father? Yeah. And the Father is in me. In me. Yeah. The way that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now we know that Jesus was a temple that God dwelt in. Amen. Is that right? Amen. He was one, he was a one man show. The Bible tells us that the fullness, oh, yeah. the, Bible, the fullness of the Godhead bodily was in Jesus. Amen. One man. Amen. So that is why he said, It is not me. There is someone that is in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that right? Hallelujah. Is it the little why the world won't see me, but you will see me. Politics won't see me. Hallelujah. So somehow, 
Knowing who he is actually is your power. It's your position. It's not about looking at yourself. There isn't much in you. But I'm going to tell you this. There is somebody. There is somebody in you. That is why the power of God says, What is this? Amen. So somehow, knowing who he is, what we call deity. Come on now. Deity, Brother Brown tells us that he is the greatest revelation of all revelations. Whatever revelation you might have, let me tell you, you've got to know him. Not only is he the greatest revelation of all revelation, he's actually the first of all revelation. You've got to know him first. I've just told you already, the disciples walked with him for three and a half years. They did not know him. They didn't know who he was. Amen. Hallelujah. It's so important. Let me tell you something. See, when John was in the Isle of Patmos, and they said he was in the spirit when he was there. In other words, John, come up, boy. I'm going to show you something. I want to transport you into the day of the Lord. There's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing from right now. This was, this was after resurrection. But I can't, I can't deal with you, John, if you are still in the flesh. You have to be in the spirit. Well, the greatest favor you can do to yourself is to be spiritual. Get in the spirit. And the power of God will tell us in the seven church age, he said, he said, Jesus will tell John, he said, John, now that you're in the spirit, be careful, boy. Be careful, boy. I'm going to show you something. But watch, before he could show him, hallelujah, before he could show him Revelation 17, before he could show him all this mystery, he said, I want you to know who I am. He said, I'm he. Hallelujah. I'm he that was dead and is alive. I'm he that was and is and is to come. Say the Almighty. I don't want know who I am. Let's start from death. It's amazing, isn't it? Yes, that way back in Brother Brothers in ministry, he preached a message, deity of Jesus. Amen. There's a lot of great things, deep things that are going to hear, but let's start from the beginning. Amen. Jesus was God. Amen. Jesus Amen. is God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's start preaching. Right. You ready? Yes, now, when we read in Luke where I said in my Sunday line, Jesus said, the Bible tells us that uh, let me just get it right. I think I've, I've memorized it so well because it's one of the scriptures that I love so much. It says something like, I need to remind myself, he expounded unto them. Let's see. Yeah, right. Okay, there you go. Amen. Beginning. It says beginning at most. Yes. Now I want you to catch that. Now he's making himself known. Is that right? Yeah. He said, guys, I want I want you to know me. And and like I've said, he's going into scripture. Yeah. Now I want you to notice where he started. Yeah. The Bible says beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He expounded unto them in all things 
concerning himself. In other words, in that six hour sermon, you know, like any minister, yeah. when he preaches, he's always got a scripture which he's going to base his sermon on. Yeah. So Jesus' sermon was based from what? Uh, from, uh, from, from, from Moses all the way, yeah. in, you know, and in all the prophets. Yeah. That was the basis of his sermon. Amen. Now let's analyze. Now, if the Bible tells us that, beginning at Moses, what are we dealing with? Well, we must be dealing with Genesis, Amen. because Moses wrote Genesis. Amen. Would you agree? Yes. And the Bible says, and all the prophets. Yeah. Now, I need you to understand one thing. Amen. Now, these prophets, in other words, the Old Testament prophets. Would you agree? Yes. In other words, Jesus took his sermon all the way from Genesis 1 verse 1 all the way up to John. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know why am I saying John? Because the Bible says the prophets were until John at that time. Is that right? He said, you want to know me? I tell you what. All the prophets, all what the prophets wrote is me. Amen. 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 Is that right? Amen. Now, this was Jesus revealing himself. Amen. By the way, Jesus has got a bride. Right. Now, I want you to know this. The Bible said concerning himself. Now, I've got a question. All right. How about scripture that concerns herself? That you and I. He is revealing himself. Is that right? Yeah. But there is there is a bride. Yeah. Amen. So at least there must be scriptures yes. concerning concerning her self. Glory. Is that right? Amen. There was a reason and a purpose. You know why? Amen. He was the first phrase. Of the threefold manifestation. In other words, he is the first one to be revealed. That's right. Now, him being revealed is a sign that she's gonna be the second. Amen. 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 Have you ever seen in a wedding? No. Who gets to be introduced first? The bride? No, it's the groom. Yeah. They will say, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Mr. Yeah. Mr. Yanomo. Yes. Come on now. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, so in other words, he's the one that intro- gets to be revealed first. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But the expectation of everybody in the audience. Oh, it's not necessary. Oh my. Oh my. I mean, everybody makes a big hoo about the introduction of the bride. Yes. But you cannot introduce the bride first. It's going to be him first. So he'll be introduced first. It shows that she's coming. Amen. That's why I'm going to preach the bride of Christ. Amen. So there was a reason why he just revealed himself only. Amen. Come on now. Is that right? Now watch and with me. Because the bride at that time. She was not in full view yet. Yes, yes, yes. Can I show you where she was? She was in him. Not yet revealed. I don't know if somebody is following what I'm saying. She was in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because this bride. That's in him. No matter what Ron says, he said when he went to Calvary, yes. 
He said, you were there. You were not yet introduced. You were not yet revealed. Why is he doing that? Because the bride was to be unleashed in the seven changes. So in other words, he says, I cannot do it now because I haven't unleashed her as yet. But I tell you what, wait until the end. Come on. Of this seven change changes, I'm going to come down according to Revelation chapter 10. And then I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven with a cloud. He's coming now with the word with a book. What is this book all about? Well, I tell you what, this book contains the mystery of this woman of the seven change changes. But in the days of the this angel, whenever when he start now to speak, what is he doing? He is now revealing this bride. He is revealing scriptures concerning her. But I want you to watch. I want you to watch. Why you watch this? Not only her, but him and her, because the two have become one. Are you with me? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So Jesus, if I can call it that way, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Amen. Let's 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 assume that was his title. Christ is the mystery of God revealed. Amen. He used only the Old Testament, including John. Yeah. Amen. But this man William Brown, when he preaches the message, Christ is the mystery of God revealed. I want you to notice the basis of his text. He said, I'm going to base my text. Oh, he said, I'm going to base my text on the entire Bible. Not just the Old Testament. Not just the New Testament. He said, this morning I'm going to refer to you that God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So he started in Genesis. Are you ready? Amen. Can we go to Genesis? Amen. This is where Jesus started. Let's turn into that sermon. Let's hear it. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Listen to what Brother Balaam says in slide number nine. Listen to what the prophet of God is interpreting that one verse in the beginning. God. He said it's the principal theme of the entire Bible. He said if you read the Bible and don't see Christ in every verse of it, go back and read it again. See, if you can't see Christ in every verse of the Bible, then you read it again because you miss something. The Bible is Christ. He is the Word. When you read in the beginning, God created, there is Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 So, when it says in the beginning, God, God. we say that word God means Christ. Amen. 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 Can we bring it down just a little bit? Amen. So that you understand what Brother Brother is saying, what he's saying. Now he told us, he said the word God means object of worship. That's right. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Amen. And remember, this is Moses' writing. But Moses does not really show you, he does not directly show you that that God became Christ. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Now for you to know how that God is Christ, you have to go to Paul. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You have to go to Paul's writing. Amen. Are you ready? Amen. Then let's go to Paul's writing. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. Now I want you to underline that word God. Watch what, what Paul is saying. Is it without controversy? Yes. Nah. Without any debate. Yes. Let's, let's, let's not fuss about this. Nah. Great is the mystery yes. of Godliness. 
Which God are we talking about? Amen. What is the God of Genesis 1 verse 1? Amen. In the beginning, God. He said that God was manifest in the flesh. Yeah. Amen. Justifying the spirit, sin of angels, preach unto the Gentiles. Oh, now I see. So Moses said, just he just said God. Yeah. Because Moses was the first Exodus prophet. Amen. 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 But Paul will give more details about this God. That this very same God became flesh. I want you to know that the Bible never said the Son became the flesh. Now, denomination, that's where they struggle. They don't have a problem with calling Jesus the Son of God. Everybody can believe that. But then that whole thing of that, that very same God becoming flesh. So who was Jesus? Jesus was God in flesh. Now I want you to notice one thing. Now let's move on. Then, but you see, Moses, Moses was writing in the context of time. Right. Is that right? Yes. You see, Moses said in the beginning, he's talking about another beginning. But I want you to notice when John writes about him, he's also referring to a beginning. Amen. But it will become very clear that the beginning that John is talking about, it is not the beginning of Genesis 1 verse 1. In other words, John is tracing him even before Genesis 1 verse 1. So he's tracing him before there was time. So what are we talking about? We're talking about eternity. And John will write, in the beginning was the word. Amen. In other words, before the word became God, before God became God, Amen. Are you with me? Let's go to John, one verse one. I've underlined something here. Maybe before we do this, so John says we saw him as the word, right? But the prophet tells us, he said, before there was a word, it was a thought. A word is an expression of a thought. Can you can everybody look at me now? See, I'm quiet, man. Okay. Assume I'm, I'm not saying that. Can you guys tell me what I'm thinking now? Oh, I have to express my thoughts in words. Is that right? Now I want you to notice John picks him up, though he picks him up in eternity, but it was, was already in the word form. Come on, John. We need to go back a little bit back. Then let's read John 1 1. In the beginning was in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. When you read the scriptures, if you don't have the true revelation of deity, it seems like yeah. there's two people. Yeah. Would you agree? Yes. Yeah. It's true that there's a word and there's God. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's read. Let's find out. Let's just delve a little bit more into this. Now, Brother Branham has already told you that a word is an expression of a thought. So in other words, for you to understand these verses, you need to take it in a form that he was before he was the word. Then you will see that he's one. Amen. 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 Because you cannot say me and my thoughts are two different people. Oh, my. Is that right? Amen. So, can I show you how do you read that scripture? For you to fully understand. Amen. So, in other words, when the Bible says in the beginning, um, just put it, in the beginning was the word, the word was, the word was with God. Take that word, break it down before it was the word. Amen. It means it was what? It was a thought. Amen. Amen. Come on now. 
Then when you read, in the beginning was the word, and the word was, uh, sorry, and the thought was with God. Then now you can understand that all oh, these are not true. This is the same. Can I give you a quotation? I need to give you a quotation for this. Slide number 11. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. See, the word was in God. It was God. It was his fault that was with him. Amen. 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 Oh. I don't have time. Maybe let me tell you. Give me, give me 15 minutes. Go. Go. Amen. John is saying he was the word. Go. But William Brennan is going even back further. Even before you was the expression of the word. Yes. 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 You know what does he call it? He said he was the attribute of his own thought. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It was an attribute of his own thought. Amen. Let's go to slide number 12. Let me give it to you. We're going to read it very quickly. Just where I found the line. He said, as we spoke last night, he was the attribute of his own thought. Brother Brother is picking him up before he was even the word. You love him? Amen. We are still in Genesis 1 and 1. I know I'm not going to finish this, but anyway, let me just jump into some things. Let's, let's get into, within this 15 minutes, you're going to have to listen very fast. <laughs> the prophet says God had threefold purpose. He said he wanted to reveal himself. In other words, to make himself known. But here is a challenge. In the form that he was, as the great eternal spirit that never began, that filled all time, space, and eternity, it would be too much for you and I as human beings. I mean, we will never comprehend. We hardly understand each other. How much God? How much more God? So listen, so this great eternal being, he said, I need to come in a form yeah. that will be palatable right. to these human beings. Yeah. So guess what? They are in flesh. Yeah. I need to become flesh. Yeah. So the great eternal spirit became human. Yeah. 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 So Jesus was the entire Bible. Think about that. Was the entire Bible in flesh. Yeah. The prophet says, he said, as the day he said, as much as the day grew, he said, as much as the, the sun grew to his fullness, he said, the Bible for the first time yeah. was fully manifested yeah. in this man called Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Then if he said that they had three, four peoples, Amen. he said he wanted to reveal himself before the first, so you can take it now. The first fold of the threefold manifestation was in Christ Jesus. He was the fullness of the Godhead body. Is that right? But then the second fold of this threefold manifestation, who is that? Is the bride of Jesus Christ. Is that right? And then what is the third fold? The third fold is returning back to Eden. So when God made, right in Genesis, when God made Adam and Eve, God already was projecting his threefold purpose in the first couple that he made in Eden. Is that right? That is why when he made Adam, I want you to watch in Genesis uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1, 26 and 27, right? Let us make men in our own image. In other words, God is saying, I want to reveal something. Right? I want to project something that is in my heart. But before, we, so that it is not too much for you guys, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the Old Testament to announce my coming before I come. So that is why Apostle Paul says the law was the shadow. In other words, he is rebuking Jacob um, uh, and his friend. Guys, did you not read that I have been coming all the way from Genesis? 
He is supposed to be in the image of God. Yeah. He is supposed to, to reveal the invisible God. Yeah. Amen. He was in the image of God. Amen. Notice. When God was creating everything, right from the get-go, he created them two by two. Yeah. Male lion and female lion. Yeah. Male donkey, female donkey. That's right. But when it comes to the human beings, there is a pattern yeah. which is very different to exactly. other creation that is yeah. Why? Because in that it's a mystery. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Amen. I told you. When you are, when we're in a wedding, who gets to be introduced first? Is the man. So when God introduced the man, the first time in Genesis chapter 1, it was not man and a woman. It was a man. Amen. This man had a dual nature. But it was a woman. Would you agree? Now, and this man, by the way, is in the image of God. Is that right? Amen. Everything is in that man. In Genesis chapter 1. So God introduces him in Genesis 1. I want you to notice again. There is no woman there. Right? Then now he takes that man and now he forms in chapter 2. He forms the man out of the dust. Once again, there is no woman. As yet. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. What is that telling you? You introduce the groom first. Yeah. Because the bride is in. Amen. Is in the groom. Amen. Now catch that. Watch. And this man, this man Adam, he's the one that is in the image of God. Can I show you? A woman is not in the image of God. That's right, man. Amen. 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 Listen to me carefully. Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to prove it to you. Amen. By the word of God. Yeah. Just relax. You say, hey, brother, everyone I'm talking about. Just yeah. relax. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We study these things. Amen. 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 Now, that makes a statement. He said, a woman is not in the image of God. What is right? Because when God made the man, he made one man with a jewel spirit, but he was one man, a man, not a man and a woman. So, a man is a reflection of God. Then how about a woman? A woman is a reflection of the man. Let's be spiritual about this. Christ is the mystery of God with him. So in other words, Christ is like Adam. But where is he? <laughs> if you got now, now the Bible tells us that Jesus was the last Adam. He was the second Adam. Now he is in the image of God. And Christ being the second Adam is in the image of God. Where is he? How about he? If is the revelation or the mystery of Christ revealed. Oh, That's why Apostle Paul says when he's talking about marriage, he said, This is a great mystery. But really, it's about Christ and the church. Where do you see that? You've got to go to Genesis chapter 1. Amen. Amen. Can I give you a scripture? No. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. Quickly. Huh? Come on now. Who gets to be introduced first? Adam. Then the woman. Amen. Hallelujah. You love him. Amen. 
Let me get you to some things here. Let's quickly go to where is this? Uh, let's go to. Let me let me analyze it. This just so that you understand. So that we let's let's bend it down. Let's let's tie it so that there's no demon that. Uh, That's right. That's right. Is that right? That's right. Let's tie the scripture. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. We, we, we're going to be quick. Genesis 1, verse 26. I want you to see where I'm on the line. So, this is the first man. Let us make man in our image. Is that right? Yeah. Verse 27 says, God created man in his own image, in the image of God. So, the first man was not was in the image of God, of God not the woman. Yeah. Amen. Okay. All right. Then, that is why we can also go to Genesis chapter 2, verse, verse uh, 23. Verse, I mean, you know about this whole thing, but I want to get to the last part of it. It says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I want you to underline that word, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. She is not in the image of God, she is in the image of a man. That's the word. Catch that. It's very important. Amen. Now let's move on. Um, where are we? Let's go. Now, what I want to do, I want to go to 1 Corinthians. I can't find 1 Corinthians. Do you, is that 1 Corinthians name or that? Um, 11. 11. Yeah. Okay, let's read it. It says, So now I want you to watch. Paul is repeating, he's telling you Genesis chapter 1. Listen to what he's saying. He said, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is in the image, and glory of God. Yeah. He said, but the woman is the glory of the man. That's right. Amen. 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 Is that right? Amen. Amen. Now, um, let's see if I can find this. Oh my, where is my scriptures here? Uh, okay, so now let's type this first man. Adam, Let's go to Romans 5 verse 14 quickly. Yeah. So remember, we say in Adam, where do we get this idea that Jesus was the second Adam? Well, we get it from the scripture here. It says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to, to Moses, even all of them that had not seen after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to uh -huh. So it was typing Christ. Yeah. So the prophet is right when he said Adam is the second. Uh, sorry, A uh, Jesus is the second Adam. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Now, so if if Jesus is the second Adam, well, I need to find. So it means he needs to be like the first Adam. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. So and then the first Adam, the Bible tells you that he is in the image of God. Yeah. Well, where do I find the scripture? That shows that this second Adam is in the image of God. Are you ready? Amen. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Okay. Um, Colossians, Colossians, where is my Colossians? Now I'm getting confused here. Uh, let's see, let me take my time. Yeah, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15. 1, verse 15. So now we are reading about the second Adam. Watch what the Bible says. Amen. Who is the image of the invisible God? Amen. Invisible God. Amen. Well, isn't it the same scripture as the one in Genesis 1? It's the same thing, right? Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Now let me read your quotation so that uh, we can get to where Right, uh, slide 21. Let's read it. Slide 21. You see what Brother Brennan says. He said, Now watch. What's the lowest, low, lowest form of life we have? Form. What's the highest form of life? Human. Certainly. What is the highest form? It just keeps coming from the lowest on up from a frog to a this and to that and to the bed until so forth in the higher forms of life until it comes to the highest form it could come. Then it was made in the image of God. There you are. And the woman was not made in the image of God, but in the image of God. Yeah. 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 
Amen. It Amen. has to be revealed first. Yeah, no. Because you are like Eve. You are in him. Amen. Amen. Now is your time of being made known. Amen. 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 Are you with me? Amen. 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 So, saints of God, we come all the way from the Old Testament. Amen. What am I saying this? You were there in Genesis chapter 1. Amen. 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 Do you believe what the Bible says Amen. Amen. about you? Yes. Yes. Why was William Branham saying? He came to reveal you. First, he has to show you your husband. And to reveal who you are. But in the days of the Lord, we shall be in your side. Give me five minutes. Is that right? Five minutes. You see, when you read, I've just already shown it to you. You know, the scriptures are so perfect. It says, Eve was bone of his bones yeah. and flesh of his flesh. You can actually, when you read there, we don't have time. When you read in Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible repeats the same thing. Yeah. Can you project it quickly if you can find it in the Bible? It's somewhere in Ephesians. In chapter, I can't chapter 6 or chapter 5. Another two. Anyway, let me, can you find it? If you can't find it, it's all right. All right, okay, let me keep preaching. Um, you see, Eve, see, hey, you know, the word of God is so perfect. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. Hey, this place is so nice. Amen. Amen. Is it really nice? Uh, Amen. No wonder the Bible says that uh, their hearts were on fire. Yeah. As was given them this six hours. Amen. Amen. We can hardly. Uh, you know, in our already people are, some people are complaining. Wow. But anyway, I want to come to this. So, when you look at Eve, God is not telling you her race. This second Eve is part of Jesus Christ. So, God says, no, don't worry. I'm also going to give you the race of this bride of mine. I'm going to show you in a time. Would you agree? Amen. Now, how many believe that Moses was Jesus Christ? In time. Amen. 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 Let's face it. Moses was born when Pharaoh was persecuting the right. right. because he wanted to kill Moses. Yeah. Yeah. When Jesus was born, Herod issued a decree to kill the boys from two years down because he wanted to kill Jesus. Moses was hid in the bulrushes from Pharaoh. Yeah. Jesus was taken to Egypt. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 All right. yes, Moses was a lawgiver. He says, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Jesus was the lawgiver. He said, It is written, yeah. Ye have heard Amen. that it says, But I say Amen. unto you, Amen. Moses was the priest. Jesus is the high priest. Yeah. That can be tied by the feeling of our of, of feelings. Amen. 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 Moses was a deliverer. He delivered the children of Israel from Amen. bondage of Egypt. Amen. Jesus was a deliverer. Yeah. He delivered you and I from the bondage of sin. Yeah. So when you look at Moses, the life of Moses, it was Jesus Christ. Amen. No wonder Moses said, he said, the Lord your God shall raise a prophet like an unto me. Is that right? Amen. So Moses was Jesus Christ. Is that right? Now if Moses is Jesus Christ, where do I find the bride? Watch. Moses was rejected by his own brothers. You remember when he tried to intervene, uh, they were fighting the, the Hebrews. And then one of them said, hey, you want to you wanna kill us like you did that Egyptian the other time? And he fled because he was rejected by his own brothers. This rejection, come on now, this rejecting, rejection paved the way for him to find a bride. Is that right? So God is telling you the race of this group. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I also give you the race? There is, according to God's demographics, 
There's three races. Yeah. Right. Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Yeah. You see, we here in South Africa, we've got black, white, colored, you name it. We've got all these different classifications. Come back to the Bible. Three. Yeah. You only have three. Yeah. You've got two Eastern people, which is the Jew and the Samaritan, and us as Gentiles, yeah. which we come from multitude. Yeah. It's black, it's white, it's yellow, yeah. it's green, it's this. Okay, yeah. it's not crazy, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So when Moses was rejected, Come on now. That was a rejection of Jesus Christ. When the Jews rejected him, the Bible says he came unto his home. And his home received him not. They rejected him. Now Moses, when they rejected him, where did he go? He go to the uh, uh, to uh, to his father, you know, Jethro. In the land of uh, is, is, is it the Midianite or something like that. Is that right? Yeah. What? And yeah. Moses married a black woman. Yeah. Yeah. From his home. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is telling you. God. God is telling you. Moses is a Jew. Yeah. That this, this Jesus is now going to marry a Gentile. So Moses, Moses marries the God. Come on now. I'm showing you who you are. So who are you? You have to part. Are you with me? Are you with me? Can we move on to the next one? How about Joseph? Jesus was saying, you see, you see, he's not only Moses, he said, I'm also Joseph. But of them says that Joseph was the perfect type of Jesus Christ. Are you ready? You see, Joseph was hated by his own brothers. Loved of his father, Jacob. So was the Lord Jesus Christ. Loved, hated by his own the brothers, the Jews. But loved of the father. Are you with me? They hated him so much until they sold him to the Israelites. Oh, come on now. Judas Iscariot, who, by the way, he was a brother to Jesus. They were in the same church. In fact, they came from the same tribe. The way Judas is coming, how many believe that Jesus is a tribe? He's from the tribe of, of uh, he's the line of the tribe of Judah. Judah. Judas is coming. He was from a town called Iscariot, which was a town in Judah. Sold by his own brothers. Now watch. When they sold Joseph, they sold him for 20 pieces. Amen. And Joseph is Jesus. Well, how about Jesus himself? Judah sold him for 30 pieces. Amen. Hallelujah. Where did they send him to? To Egypt. And what happened there? He found himself a brother. If Jesus is Joseph, and Asenath is the gentle bride married to Joseph. Come on, somebody. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Are you the gentile? Yeah. It means you are Asenath. Yeah. One more last thing. Yeah. Remember the Bible says in all the prophets. I'm just picking one or two. How about David? Would you believe David was Jesus Christ? Amen. 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 Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, David was a shepherd. Yeah. So was Jesus. Yeah. He's a shepherd of the flock. Amen. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on. I want you to watch. You see, the Gentiles, they are from different kingdoms, yeah. different towns. Yeah. Huh? Different nations. Sotho, Zulu, Africans, Shoah. It's a, it's a multitude. Where do I find that in the Old Testament? Where do I find that multitude? Well, God says, look at David. Remember, he himself, he was the root and offspring of David. He said, look at David. God has to allow David to marry 500 wives. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. What is God showing you there? He said, listen, I want to show you something. This bride of mine.
time. It's not just one person. They are Gentiles. And being manifested of them being Gentiles, they come from Matthew. They are born like a child. Amen. 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 Can I give you a quotation? Amen. And Brother Brennan says, all those 500 wives of David were considered one wife. Look at how perfect the scriptures are. Amen. Look at how perfect the scriptures are. You come a long way. That's why Solomon said there's nothing new. There's nothing new. This is a repeat. How many can believe that? So for me, it makes sense when Brother Branham says, guys, when you now can go to scriptures and begin to see yourself, the rapture will go. You know what's delaying the rapture? You and I are lazy. We are lazy. We are, we are relaxed. Ah, now we are in the message. How ah, we understand God here. We understand this. Hey, be careful. It was two million that came out. Only two went in. Don't stop. You are the second fold of the threefold. Amen. Amen. How many can believe that we are? We are, also, we are the bride is the mystery of Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I know it's been long, but it was in my heart. I want you to. You know, uh, you know, ministers, that's why they have to, you know, you can say what you want to say in five minutes, literally. Mm -hmm. It will be more like John and Mary, John, John and Mary lived happily after. Uh, yeah. But you don't want to know who was Mary and who was John. But that's why we have to go through Amen. this to show who you are. Amen. Amen. You come from him. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. And you're going back to Amen. Amen. recognize who's in you. Yeah. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this truth. Amen. We thank you for this revelation. Oh, God, may you make it real to each and every one of us. May we meditate upon these things, Father. Lord. Lord, may we become what we are reading, what we are hearing, Father. Lord Jesus, may, may it be like it was in the early days when the Holy Ghost came down. Amen. The Bible says, when they saw the apostles, they realized that this had been with Jesus. Amen. Well, God, what good would it do for us to talk about the message and, and we don't become that message? Amen. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you that you've honored us. You gave us this word. May our lives be centered around you, Father. Even as your prophet says, we need to make you the principal theme of our lives. Amen. We love you. We you bless your children, Lord God. It's another week. You know their needs. I pray God you're going to take it. Pray for God's blessing. And my device will be coming back. Pray God you will grant them journey message back to you to their homes, Father. We thank you, we love you, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.
I respect those homes, oh God. This is a festive season, oh God. A lot of things are happening, oh God. But we want to find ourselves in your hands, Heavenly Father. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ and the church shall say, Amen.